Welcome to the latest Construction Week Viewpoint podcast. I'm Oscar Russo, and joining me again in the CW studio is Jamana Abdel Razak. How are you, Jamana? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. So uh, today we're obviously talking about Hyperloop. Is the Hyperloop system overhyped? There's been a lot of talk about the Hyperloop system. I think uh, since Construction Week has been covering it since 2016, we've covered a, uh, a flurry of different stories, and it's been ongoing for a yes. long time. Yes, this is something that's definitely caught everyone's attention when it first came out a couple years ago because of the fact that it's so different and so futuristic. And a lot of people are also very critical about how this is going to manifest, how this is going to happen. So the Hyperloop has a lot of hype. A lot of hype. It's interesting to know whether whether it's overhype. I think first let's take a step back and look at what Hyperloop is, because a lot of people in Dubai will have heard of Hyperloop. But, but it's they, very confusing. It's yes. very confusing and they may not necessarily know what it is. So for a brief summary, Hyperloop is essentially a futuristic form of autonomous travel that uses electric propulsion to propel pod-shaped vehicles through steel or concrete mm-hmm. tubes, which is interesting. They're talking about the construction, it has to be steel or concrete. Yes. And they can travel up to speeds of 300 meters per second. That's 1,100 kilometers per hour. Mm-hmm. So rapid, rapid transport. Basically the vehicle, Jamada, it floats above the track using uh, magnetic levitation and it mm-hmm. glides basically at airline speeds, but it's the cost of trucking. So it's significantly cheaper than mm-hmm. air flight. Yes. But obviously at the speed of a jet, which is incredible. So it has multiple purposes and the ability to transform and revolutionize a range of different industries and I think what's important to raise is the systems being built by Virgin and they're one of the key companies involved Mm -hmm. in Hyperloop will be constructed on on columns or tunneled below ground so this will avoid kind of dangerous grade crossings or like hitting wildlife so in terms of like safety aspects they're saying it's relatively safe. Yeah because that's one of the big issues isn't it The, the safety aspect it goes it's incredibly fast. Yeah, and it's, um, and it's a whole new type of uh, technology. People aren't really familiar with it. They don't really know how it's really constructed, how it's going to function. So a lot of people are a bit timid at the yeah, moment. I think that's fair to say. And I think safety as well is an obvious issue. Mm-hmm. Virgin, as I mentioned, who's one of the main companies involved in Virgin, in the Hyperloop. Obviously, you've got yeah. Virgin Hyperloop 1, and then you've got Hyperloop Transportation Technologies yeah, there's actually TT. there's actually multiple companies. I think that's also, uh, for a lot of people who hear about the Hyperloop, they don't really know that there's actually multiple companies now investing um, in this technology and really focusing on it at the moment. Yeah, and talking about investment as well, um, the two main companies involved, Virgin Hyperloop One, the um, the biggest shareholder, the biggest single shareholder in Virgin Hyperloop One is DP World, obviously the giant yeah. Dubai port operator. And yeah. um, you've also got Abu Dhabi Capital um, investing as well. What do you think? The uh, you've got Abu Dhabi and Dubai investing in Hyperloop. What do you yeah. think that says about the UAE's appetite for Hyperloop systems? That it's serious. That you have these major investors, these massive companies, these global companies, with uh, you know massive revenues, now looking to invest in this technology and looking to invest seriously. So when you have major names like this, it's, it's very clear that at this point, they're really willing to look into the research, to look into um, making this uh, a form of transportation that people can actually start using. You know, And of course, here in Dubai and Abu Dhabi, transportation isn't as easy you know so this could be something that could solve a lot of solutions here in the emirate between a lot of the uh the different cities the major cities and i think it could be something that a lot of people would be happy to see at the moment yeah i think so and richard branson at the the launch of a new company called dp world cargo speed Mm -hmm. which is a hyperloop system specifically involved in the uh transportation of uh freight of yeah. cargo. Um, he mentioned that there hasn't been a new form of transport in over a hundred years. So our airports, our road networks, and our maritime networks mm-hmm. are becoming increasingly congested. So as you mentioned, Jamana, people here are looking for a new form of transport. Exactly. And this is what the Hyperloop is delivering. So since 2016, on Construction Week, we've had a steady drip of news stories started to kind of pour through and mm-hmm. it's really started to pick up the pace after the number of feasibility studies were launched and in 2018 we've seen obviously DP World Cargo Speed created. Mm-hmm. We've also seen Aldar and Hyperloop TT sign an agreement to build a 10 kilometer track in Abu Dhabi. Yeah. Just bring me up to speed on some of the latest developments in the Hyperloop world. 
So over the last couple of years, I guess they announced it and a lot of people really interested in what this Hyperloop, um, this Hyperloop concept really was because it's something completely different. So, um, so a lot of people were, were skeptical in the very beginning. Uh, you heard a lot about these different companies investing and a lot of studies, but it was studies uh, and concepts. It wasn't actually something that uh, with, with you know construction mm -hmm. timeframes or anything back then. But over the years, like you said, Richard Branson has invested in it. Um, a lot of other countries are looking into it. Um, there are testing in the States. Uh, India is looking into actually constructing one. And uh, Saudi Arabia has actually said that they are also looking into doing research and possibly having their own Hyperloop very soon. So um, it's definitely expanded. There have definitely been more investors over the last couple of years. And it's become something that isn't just, you know, just like a thought or, you know, we, we would, we'd like to do it. It seems like it's actually happening. And yeah. it seems like there's money going into it at the moment. There's and a there, lot of money, I think, yeah. going into it. And the time frames are starting to be a little bit clearer now. We could see that, you know, uh, things are actually developing and things are actually starting to finalize. So um, it seems like this is something that people are taking seriously. And it's not just this futuristic, you know, method of transportation that everybody thought was so different that it can possibly, you know, actually happen, you know? Yeah, and it's, it's actually happening yeah. right here, right now. And as you mentioned, Saudi Arabia's crown prince, he wants to roll out an ultra-fast Hyperloop network in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. Now, that's according to the British business tycoon, Sir Richard Branson, mm -hmm. um, who actually has held talks with Virgin Hyperloop One and officials in Saudi Arabia. And apparently talks have been ongoing for five months about launching a Hyperloop system in Saudi Arabia. Now, the next steps to develop a Hyperloop system in the country mm -hmm. have not been made public. And all of these discussions up to this point have been confidential, they've been held behind closed doors. So mm -hmm. we don't know what stage they're at. But what we do know is that there is talks at a very high level mm -hmm. with Virgin Hyperloop One and Saudi Arabian officials to get a Hyperloop system built in Saudi Arabia, which, as you mentioned, Joanna, this isn't now just a, a futuristic form of transport that people are talking about. So I think what we're seeing, Joanna, is obviously you've got Aldara and Hyperloop TT. They signed the agreement to build the 10-kilometer track in Abu Dhabi. Mm -hmm. Now, this uh, it was a memorandum of understanding that was signed between the two. Now, this is going to be to build a 10-kilometer track of Hyperloop to be built near Aldar's first affordable housing master plan development, Al Ghadir. Yeah. Now, when this is completely rolled out, the MOU will spur the development of the Hyperloop TT, and this includes the construction of a full-scale commercial Hyperloop system, a Hyperloop research and development advanced mobility centre, which is quite a mouthful, yeah. uh, a demonstration and visitor centre, and an innovation hub as well. Now, Hyperloop TT has said it plans to uh, build the uh, the construction over a phased development, mm -hmm. um, starting, as I mentioned, with a 10 kilometer allocation. Um, and the network is likely to expand across the UAE. Now, the, yeah. uh, the proposed construction site, as you mentioned, is between Dubai and Abu Dhabi. Yeah. Now, the interesting thing is that it's very close to the Expo 2020 site. It'll be really interesting. And I think what you're gonna see as well as these, these systems really cut down the time it takes to get from A to B. And I think yeah. they're looking at, if, say for example, you have a Hyperloop system built between Dubai and Riyadh. That can cut the journey down to 48 minutes. Now, there aren't any talks, as far as I'm aware, or as far as has mm. been made public, but there are talks to yeah, build a Hyperloop still concepts. system. It's still concepts, but that's, that's a really key thing. Imagine how quickly it would be to get from Dubai to Riyadh, and imagine what benefits that would bring to businesses. Definitely bringing these cities closer together would definitely bring tons of benefits um, for businesses, for um, People working in Dubai, for instance, and, and living in Abu Dhabi and vice versa. Um, it the benefits are really massive. And I, I think looking forwards now, um, the first Hyperloop system to be built by Virgin Hyperloop One, which as we mentioned, is one of the two main companies mm -hmm. involved in this area. Uh, this is going to be built between Pune and Mumbai in India. So even though we've got talks about Aldar and Hyperloop TT, the first big commercial Hyperloop system is going to be built by Virgin Hyperloop One, will be built in India. Uh, now, every day between India and Pune, uh, mm -hmm. between Mumbai and Pune, uh, you have about 1,300 vehicles, 130,000 vehicles traveling every day between the two cities. The roads yeah. are incredibly congested, I and mean, it's a two to three hour journey. It's, it's long, it's laborious, 
and it obviously creates pollution and stuff like that as well. Um, so to have a, a rapid transport system built in India is going to make a huge, huge difference in terms of that travel. And it also means you can transport palletized goods from uh, Mumbai to Pune as well. Uh, now, construction on the 140-kilometer route between the, the two Indian cities is expected to start in the first quarter of 2019, Jamana. Yeah. Um, and it will be the first Hyperloop or Virgin Hyperloop 1 system built. So that's you know just one more example of how rapidly this is going, you know, and how seriously people and governments are taking it. I mean, there's already one that's being constructed uh, in India. So this is we'll definitely have to wait and see um, where this goes and how this develops, because a lot of a lot of um, the hyperloop systems right now that we're talking about are just in the feasibility stages. Mm -hmm. So it'll still take. A bit of time. It's a long-term kind of investment and uh, something to look out for for the future. Well, definitely. Yeah, I, I just wanted to bring you back to a couple of points around safety. Now, obviously, safety is an obvious issue mm -hmm. for the Hyperloop system. Um, what's Virgin said about the Hyperloop system and how they're able to to look at safety issues? Well, Virgin has said that they will have multiple emergency braking techniques, uh, triggering an immediate braking of the vehicles. So vehicles will have a full suit of life support systems, will have the ability to repressurize the tube if needed. So they've looked into um, how to make these, how to make this transfer system safe. Because that's really key, isn't it? Because you can imagine if this, ch this pod, which is essentially what it is, yeah. is traveling at 1,100 exactly. kilometers per hour. Safety is going to be an absolute paramount issue. And that's, I think, what most people were thinking about, uh, the, the speeds of these. And it's, it's a pod. It's something that most people aren't really familiar with. And I think a lot of people need to be sure that if they're going to eventually be using them, that they're 100% safe. Yeah, and I, I think... You know, as you mentioned, Joanna, the Virgin has said they will have multiple emergency braking techniques, mm -hmm. which will trigger an immediate braking of the vehicle. But I think there are still some issues that need to be ironed out. For example, if you've got these Hyperloop pods, take, for example, the one that's being built in India between Pune and Mumbai. Mm -hmm. That's 140 kilometers long. So what happens if there's a bottleneck or the, the pod breaks down midway between the two cities? How do you get a team out there to go and fix that? I think this is just something we'll have to see um, in the future because there are a lot of details that haven't been ironed out. Um, there have been a lot of um, questions that because we're in, you know, uh, we're in the study stage or feasibility uh, studies, nobody really knows where this is going. Nobody has a, you know, an answer, you know, 100%. So I think it's just something that will need time Mm -hmm. And we'll just need to wait and see how this, where this will go. Yeah, it will be interesting to see. Obviously, as we mentioned, we've got the first Hyperloop, which is going to be built in India. Construction there will start in the first quarter of 2019. And then you've obviously got Hyperloop TT as well, which said it's uh, the first phase of the Hyperloop will be built in, hopefully in time, for Expo 2020. So as you mentioned, we, you know, we're really moving along very quickly. Yeah. And um, certainly it seems like maybe the Hyperloop isn't as overhyped as people think there is genuine work on the ground to implement the system and the the benefits of that are very clear and you've got Dubai that you and I were talking before we went on air about how Dubai wants to become an innovation creator rather than an innovation importer building all of this in the UAE uh, even though it's not a technology that Dubai has created itself Dubai is certainly one of the largest investors in the technology which demonstrates yeah. a clear appetite for the technology it demonstrates a clear appetite to be innovative to be cutting edge to be at the forefront of exciting exactly. new developments in a range of different industries with construction you know going to start in 2019 in India and construction hopefully in a couple of years for Hyperloop TT in the UAE yeah. it's exciting times for the Hyperloop system it's very interesting we'll just have to wait and see and uh Keep an eye out. Well, you've been listening to the Construction Week Viewpoint podcast. We hope you've enjoyed listening to it as much as we enjoyed recording it. Uh, we'll publish new episodes every Monday at 12 o'clock. If there's actually a topic that you would like us to discuss, please do get in touch with us. Um, we'd love to, love to hear your thoughts. I would love to hear your feedback. Um, but until then, thank you very much for listening and goodbye. Goodbye.